Okay, so you can keep it here and then. Nate, is this, is this the, the deck that contains the bits on mentorship? Because it's not, it's not planning or it's not planning to do things for you. So it's not planning to run your life or run your business for you. But what the mentors are here for is to provide a lot of information, which would be useful for you. We'll be asking questions, asking you questions, which will help you think out what you, your goals are, what your objectives are. And they'll also listen because by listening to you carefully, then they can see how best with their experience and skills, they can help you on your journey in terms of your development, your career, or even building your life skills. So the, the curriculum which we've put together is also packed with some of these topics which we think are really essential in this area. And again, um, most of you would have re received that because we also sent a, a document with the curriculum so that you can start reviewing the set of courses which were there. So the way we designed the program is we thought to start off and to bring everybody at, at par in a way was to go over some of the key things that most people would be expected to know. If you're starting up a business, if you want to start applying for jobs, uh, how do you go about it? So those, those reflect some of the, the key things which we've put together. And we've decided to do this as Nate explained virtually, mostly because of the current uh, pandemic situation. But it's also a good way of being able to reach um, many people and give them the same information at the same time. And as the, as the courses progress, you also have an opportunity to, to start reflecting and deciding what future mentoring um, needs you may have. So whilst we're doing a lot of it as group mentoring, there will be opportunities where you might identify certain mentors who you're either interested in the job they do, or maybe by the way they come across, you feel, okay, this is somebody I can relate to. Maybe they can also guide me, help me along my journey. So there will be possibilities at that. The mentors really would be, uh, would be there to encourage you and motivate you working towards these goals. And as I said, they will be providing lots of information, introduce you to uh, both formal and informal networks as applicable, as, uh, as appropriate. So they, they really would be that sounding board. They'll be that critical friend who has the interests of your development in their hearts. And they will also offer you quite different perspectives. So you, you don't have just a tunnel view of things. You, you have, you know, you just see how everything fits together in an ecosystem and therefore help you to frame your thoughts and your ideas much better than that. So in, in terms of the benefits for you, um, you, it might be obvious, but there are actually very, very useful benefits as you, as you develop in your, yourself, your career, your work, or whatever state you are at the moment. Your, it, the benefits would include increasing your self-confidence. You'll be getting that motivation. And from our perspective, we hope we'll be imparting that resilience so that you start thinking resilient, you start acting resilient, and you know you are better placed to weather any storms that come across. So we'll be there to support and challenge you and help you to get a clear sense of your personal direction. And with this, all the information that you, you, you get, it will only, it will, we hope that it will help you to become stronger in whatever career field you choose. So there are also um, salient things like, you know, even understanding the formal and informal culture of the different business structures in, in, in the economy, whether you're working in industry, in private sector organizations, uh, or, or wherever you are, there's a certain culture around all that. And we hope that some of these mentors will be able to share uh, these tips with you. So if, we, if I quickly look at the um, uh, curriculum, I won't go through line by line, but I'll just give a, a highlight of what we try to achieve with the curriculum. So the five key areas we looked at was the building a business. So we have a series on how do you build a business? And this, this will cover things like 
actually what business structure should I go for? Should I just be a sole trader? Should I look into a partnership? You know, should I be, form a limited company? And therefore we've looked at things like, if you think of setting up any kind, kind of company, how do you go about registering? And we've got industry experts, you know, uh, who would come and, and give you details about how you do that. The second key area is how do you run a resilient business? If you decide that you want to go the business route, you want to do something, how can you make sure from the outset that you've got the right tools in place, you've got the right information to make sure that you start on a solid foundation? And so we have basic courses like bookkeeping, budgeting, which will help you start thinking about some of these things at an early stage and start getting the right people with, get into the right habits so that as your business goes, you'll be able to manage it. The third area we'll be looking, we are looking at in the curriculum are soft skills. So I mentioned earlier, there may be people who, you know, most of you probably are still in university, technical colleges, you are still expecting that somewhere along the line in the near future, you would want to look for jobs. So it's like thinking about, okay, how do I really uh, write a, a persuasive a cover letter to go along with my CV. How do I present myself when I go to an interview? And you know, how do I try to start thinking about being effective, the way I behave, the way I speak, the, and you know, things like that. And then we have the fourth area, which is really looking at uh, resilient personality. How do you make yourself resilient? And within this section, we're focusing more, more on the communication, communication series, because a lot of what um, happens, whether it's body language, whether you're writing in your WhatsApp forum or you're sending an email, we need to understand certain etiquettes. And I think my colleague will be, uh, my colleague Aaron will probably be talking about more of this a little later on. But it's really important because this age of technology and things like uh, WhatsApp and all this messaging, a lot of it, a lot of us abbreviate a speech or abbreviate what we like to write. But in terms of communicating to the public or communicating to an audience that you are trying to reach to, we need to learn certain etiquette. We need to know when we are writing to our friends is different from when I'm trying to get a business partner and if I'm using. WhatsApp, I still need to be careful that I'm communicating in the right way. So it's those sort of things we'll be covering. And then we want to look at gender. Gender is something which um, we should always bring to the fore because while gender empowerment, a lot of picture just picture, you know, women that thinking that we're speaking of women with gender, we want to stress that it's not only, yes, it's, it's really important to include women in the economy because it has been proven that they actually increase productivity across all sectors of the economy. Of the economy. But what is also important about gender is the fact that it goes beyond women because we're looking more at equality and fairness. So we are looking at different aspects of, of, you know, of gender we are trying to make sure that we, we when we approach uh, life, we, we are not discriminatory. So we don't discriminate against any aspect, whether people are physically uh, disabled or whatever. But also we look at lifestyle, we look at mental health uh, uh, issues, and we try to make sure that the individual, no matter what you are doing in life, whether you are carrying on in academia, whether you decide to become an entrepreneur, you are, you are well-rounded and we recognize this in everything we do. So we, in, we, we approach everything with a gender lens. So the sixth area that we, we, we've included in the curriculum is the industry specific area. And this is where we invite um, mentors from different um, industries in the economy to propose uh, topics because Sometimes um, there might be certain topics don't that don't fit neatly in the standard. You know, people normally know the key roles or the key careers. Like, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a pharmacist. But there are other there are other fields which are more salient, but increasingly becoming uh, important in the economy, especially with this uh, in this period of digitization. 
and improved technology. So we want to bring industry specific areas into the curriculum so you can get more information about different things. So we'll be covering things like careers in IT, looking at cybersecurity, and even looking at the, the regular market traders who trade in, in our markets, in our open air markets. So that's the kind of um, uh, curriculum we've uh, put together. And of course, this will evolve and we've been able to spread this throughout the year because the mentorship program is designed so that it runs for a year. And we've been able to spread this across up until um, December. So um, if we get new topics as time goes on, we'll be able to introduce those and, and definitely for next year, based on how the success of this, this uh, first uh, program will be able to adapt, adapt it accordingly. So if I move now on to looking quickly at the April sessions, the April sessions will focus mostly on building a business. So we are looking at the series of, of talks or presentations around building a business. Um, so it, it would be, how do I set up a business? How do I register a business? Like I said before, how do I set up a, a business bank account? And beginning to think about how do I actually go about looking for money to support this business idea that I have? And without going individually into the people facilitating these courses, some of them at least two of them are in the, in the profile document we sent for the mentors. Uh, we're still expecting some of the profiles to come in. As soon as those come in, um, we'll, share, we'll share them with you. I think um, in a nutshell, that's what I was going to mention at this stage um, regarding the, the um, mentorship program. I'm sure you will all have questions and we'll have an opportunity at the end for all questions. Uh, to be taken. So in the meantime, you could also um, send your questions via the chat uh, function, which is on the Zoom, and we can pick that up and respond to it. Or even if you think of a question a little later on after the call is over, you could always use um, I am resilient at resilientghana.com. So without further ado, I'll hand over to my colleague to look at the format and etiquette of some of the, vet the virtual sessions we'll be having. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Irene. Uh, let me try and uh, get my presentation up uh, and then, yeah. Uh, thank you everyone once again for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we are trying to do our best here to contribute to um, the times, the changing times. And um, we know that, uh, what do you call it? World global level events that are really going to impact uh, businesses and individuals. They are not scheduled to, at least projections don't show that they're going to stop anytime soon. Um, even the COVID-19 was somewhat predicted because of um, the drive towards globalization and um, how cities get more clammed up by the year. We know that uh, global warming or climate change, as we call it now, is essentially also accelerating some of these global events. So this program is not meant to be a one-off. It's not meant to be a one year and uh, we'll keep expanding. As I really mentioned, we are not going to box ourselves in. Uh, our mentors are not going to come from people who have been sitting in offices their whole lives. We are going to have mentors from across the spectrum, um, wherever they may be. So you will see your macular women on how to start a business um, in that sector. How do you penetrate uh, such a competitive market? How did they do it? So yeah, that's something to look forward to. Um, I'll quickly be taking us through the format for the lessons and essentially some of the etiquette we should be observing. All in all, through this meeting, I think we've done so well. Um, there hasn't, there has barely been any um, audio interruptions or video interruption, which is stellar, considering that for my regular meetings, we always have someone always chugging in or an audio going on in the background. So I think we've done very well. Um, so I will not dwell on some of them too much.
All right. So I'll just start quickly with the webinar do's and don'ts. Um, so let me touch on how the formats are going to be. There are two main formats. There is the general webinar format, where just like how we are having this meeting today, um, especially around the coaching sessions, uh, the big coaching sessions, you have mentors come to tell our mentees essentially about how to start a business, all of these things. So there will be very big groups. Um, this is essentially the minimum number we expect. We can have up to a thousand participants in one call. So I'm going to quickly touch on some of these. It will also be shared with you. As you know, we always share documentation with you so that you can always use our guides. Um, so the first one is one, you always have to make sure that you show up on time because yes, there will be recordings, but then being on time means that you'll be able to ask appropriate questions at the end of the session. You don't want to go and essentially check your um the video and go like oh i actually had this question how do i get this question answered so it's very good you show up on time turn off your webcam and microphone it's it's also very important because we really um it helps so that you don't throw off your presenter as it may you wait your turn to speak there you can raise your hand all right but then just allow the moderator to call you during the q a session with the hand raised and go like, okay, please um, ask your question. And when you are coming in, please use an appropriate name. We really don't want any embarrassment. Um, it's, it won't be appropriate to use some terms here. We all know. Let's try and use. Uh, let's try and be as common sense car as possible. Use appropriate names so that when you are called, you know you are the one being called for any question. And then please don't use the chat room for side conversations or anything that's not really pertaining to the conversation going on. Um, if you have positive feedback, please do well, send it to us after the uh, meeting. Uh, let us know what you thought and all of that. But we want to keep the chat area very clean so that we can really sort out the questions that are going to be asked and then get appropriate answers to them. And when you are called to answer or ask a question, please tone down on the self-promotion you essentially yes it's a big platform there are a lot of people who are there for you to talk about yourself and all of that please get to the point if the moderator wants to know maybe your background or the mentor wants to know your background where you, uh, you essentially work go to school what business you started i'm sure they'll put it forward and then be able to essentially answer that so these are just quick run through we'll send it to you uh to be a bigger document on what you be expect from me and like I mentioned, there's a general one. And then there's a short, uh, there's a one-to-one -one or one mentor to a small group of say one to five mentees who they take through one-on-one -on -one sessions or one to a small group session. How do we get this? We essentially sort it out through, you, you all presented profiles to us. Um, some were very detailed, some not so much. And you indicated where you think you really need mentoring. We have a lot of mentors. We keep building our mentor pool week in, week out. And what we do as we stay in Ghana, what we do is essentially we are providing a platform for you to one, get mentorship and two, to get funding for your business or whatever idea you want to propagate. So one, you give us a profile. We do that profile, we do the matching for you. That's one thing that we are trying to do here. We match you to a mentor. And then there's also the sessions that we have here. Maybe during a session with a mentor, you can ask something that the mentor thinks is very brilliant, or you can have a suggestion that they take a liking to you. They will just add it to their pool. It's, it's not a problem at all. So your participation will really also contribute to you getting a mentor for a one-on-one -on -one session. All right. So for those small sessions, Okay. okay. So for those one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, these are also quick guidelines. Once again, we'll send you uh, bigger uh, guidelines to go through. Remember, your mentor is a volunteer. We are not paying anyone. We've actually all stepped up. We have very big companies who have stepped out to actually, stepped up to actually train you, because we know that when it comes to country-level economics, uh, we all win together. 
So we have a lot of people stepping up. We vetted them, industry experts. We actually more than surprised how we've been able to amass such a wealth of uh, what they call experience and um, who are willing to train you. So remember, they are volunteers. Please don't go around shouting at someone or don't go around pushing someone. They will find the time for you, allow them to. And you really have to take responsibility for, responsibility for your learning. This is not university setting. We don't want it to be that way, okay? We want your training to be as practical as possible. So you also need to take a lot of responsibility for your, responsibility for your own learning. If you talk about, if you are talking about uh, network security and they take you through a topic, please delve deeper. There are, there are limitless resources online now on how to learn. Stay on top of your learning and don't always rely on the mentor sending you, let me call it handouts for um, a term that's more relatable to a university uh, participant. Be very mindful of your mentor's time. When they say show up at this time, please show up at that time. Once again, it's a volunteer. They are very busy people. Um, so if they make time for you, please show up on time. And then essentially just, it, it's catchy. Uh, I think this one, everybody knows pretty straightforward. And be open about your needs and your feedback. If you think they are going too fast in what they're doing, or you don't really understand what they're trying to do, or they are not meeting your needs, please communicate it to them nicely, as nicely as you can. And two, which also leads to taking care of, uh, taking responsibility for your own learning, you have to recognize your mentor's limitations. Um, I, I, I personally would say that I'm more of a generalist consultant. Um, I don't really specialize in one area. It's an amalgamation of areas, but there are, there's so much that I don't know, even in the areas that are essentially consulting. So when you ask a question and they don't have an answer for you, please do your homework. You, you can essentially, I do, I, me for instance, I don't mind being taught anything at any time of my career because it will always contribute towards um, what I'm doing. So please recognize their, limit, uh, their limitations and also contribute towards the relationship and be flexible and learn. What do I mean? Let, don't box yourself. Don't think they are going through a one to five track on how to be an expert in, uh, say, banking or finance. You have to be flexible. If they are essentially taking you through uh, five sessions on communication, don't, don't jump the gun. Um, I remember in school when there, there, there are some students who always go like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing these models or whatever? We just need to learn and pass. This is not a learning and pass, uh, what do you call it, agenda that we are trying to push here. We are trying to make you better. So please be flexible. They might not use very conventional ways of tutoring, which you are used to. Be flexible and try and also see, see from their point of view. So this is just a quick overview. Documents will be shared with you once again. And then I'll quickly touch on the incentives. And so we I'll quickly touch on the incentives. So we all right. So we have a few incentives which are trying to give to you. Um, I think first and foremost, the biggest incentive here is learning. We let's get out of the way. It's the ability to essentially get. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to get great learning from these coaching sessions and one-on-one -on -one, um, program. And that should be your priority, if you ask me. Um, after leaving school, we all know, it's essentially, we, we all say that it's, um, it's, there are no jobs in the market. Um, it's true to a very large extent, but I also do a lot of hiring. And I know that it's so easy to shortlist from uh, 300, uh, people, applicants to 20 in a day, because people do not take, um, they're, they're not overly curious about some of these things, some of the things that employers look out for. And that's what we are trying to convey here. So your main priority here should be learning, learning to be industry ready, learning to be a great entrepreneur. And then there are some prizes, um, let's call them prizes, if we may. Uh, there are internship opportunities, um, 
like we mentioned, it's not just mentors, individual mentors coming on board. We have corporations uh, like KPMG and all of that coming on board to help us administer this program. And they will make available some internship opportunities. Once again, your participation is very important. There's a trip um, which we are, it's not firm. That's why it's not seen that a trip to South Africa or Kenya for this event because we are working, we have a network partners. We want to get something that we think will be very impactful. It's not a trip to just go and shop and come. It's a trip to essentially attend something that will add to whatever you've learned from the program already. So we are still working on the details. We will send a full term series. And then there are uh, devices, let's call them devices. We put laptops here, but then we'll keep letting you know the price pool that we are putting for it. How do you get this? How do you get uh, into these price pools outside the learnings? There are a few selection criteria. There is attendance, which is very important. That's why we register for the session. And then there is participation. Please ask uh, very intelligent questions. You, you don't, fine, ask your questions, but really think deeply about your questions before you ask them. Let's keep the, um, the self-promotion on a down low, if you may, and then really ask very impactful questions that is going to help move the program forward. Your engagement and mentors is also going to inform some recommendations from them. They are going to tell us how great you are doing because there's an assessment. You'll be assessing your mentors to an extent, and then they will also be providing assessments. So you will do a combination of these to essentially come up with. So it's not a raffle. You are not just showing up. A raffle, we don't do that. We are not going to do the National Lottery Authority start a raffle. It's going to be based on your participation, um, on a, an amalgamation of these uh, criteria points. So that's just a quick run through of the incentives, and the etiquettes will be looking forward to from you. Um, I'll leave the rest of my team to see whether there are any questions from them uh, or any inputs. If there are no inputs, then we'll quickly go to the QA. Thank you very much. All right, Irene, uh, I think you are muted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much, Aaron. Um, yeah, like you were saying, I don't know if any of the team has any further input. I know that we're also encouraging that you actively follow uh, social media handles. And I don't know if Khadija has any guidelines to add to this. If not, we'll go um, directly into Q&A. Khadija, do you have any messages you want to share with the mentees at this point? Um, I would like to thank everyone for joining. And I'll also encourage us to um, visit our website and our social media platforms to um, keep in touch. We post um, updates on, we post updates on the, um, the programs and um, give you reminders um, on all the platforms on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, so I'll just type the handle over here for all the, um, on all platforms, it's the same handle. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thanks, Khadija. So um, we'll, we'll take questions now. You either raise your hand. So uh, there are a few questions uh, in the that chat, so I'll quickly address those ones, and then uh, we'll go to the, so please raise your hand if you have any questions. So I'll quickly go through the chat for the questions that are here. All right, so um, I think the first question I see here is um, if there's a WhatsApp group to join. Um, we will create one for you, but it's very important that you stay by the guidelines, through the guidelines, because we know WhatsApp groups can degenerate very quickly. Um, we'll really enforce that. It's very important to us that you stick through the conversation and you try and keep it as uh, productive as possible. So we will consider this, we will create a WhatsApp group, but we will not force people into the group. We have your contact already. We will send invites through emails and then your uh, WhatsApp. We will not put you indirectly into the group and then you can opt to join. But then the enforcement will be very strict. We will keep reminding you about that. And uh, some of you have not received documents uh, on the mentorship program. Please 
uh, get back to us. You have the email to provide it to you. Uh, maybe the email you provided in the form was wrong. We'll, we'll do the data cleansing to make sure that we get it to you. So if you've not received it, check your email first, check your spam because we did a big broadcast. Maybe it has gone to your spam. If, it, if it's not in your spam, then just get back to us. Let us know, we'll send the documents to you, including the documents we have here today. Okay, I think who are donors and partners are. So we have, um, you, you can always check our website for the donors and partners, but we are still building them once again. Um, You're looking at the team here. Almost everyone here is working on a pro bono basis because this means a lot to us. Um, for funding the program itself, we have a list of partners which we are building, you can see on the website. And at no point are we going to take money from you. That's not why we are here. No one will ever ask money from you. Take note of that. Inform your friends that please don't pay money to anyone for this program or for any mental assignment or anything. So we'll make that list available. It should be on our website, but then we'll make sure it's fully updated. And you're asking whether we can explore Telegram for the groups. Um, once again, um, thank you for that suggestion. We will look at that and then we'll just let you know whether it's a Telegram. I think the group, the team will have a small deliberation and then we'll decide because we know the numbers are going to grow very quickly. Okay. Yes, uh, I think someone said something is not available on the website. That's fine. Um, if it's about documentation, we'll also explore keeping it on the website. Once again, I think that would be a good idea. Uh, they are not extremely confidential documents. We want everyone to see you are very transparent. So we'll make the documents available uh, for you. Um, okay, I think there was a hand up, but it's gone down. Maybe you put your question in the chat. So I'll just keep going through. Okay. So someone suggesting a Slack channel. Once again, it's an option. Um, we will look at that. Slack channels, we plan to use the Slack channels for the, men, uh, for the mentors because we have different tracks, uh, different topics that they are tackling so that we'll be able to build a series out. So an example like uh, a series on the energy sector. So we have the channel for the mentors so that they deliberate on how to have that. Um, the merits of a Slack channel for the mentees, you essentially also look at that. You look at the merits of that. So I will note that down and make sure that we take a look at that. So wisdom, I'll pause here and then you can ask your question. I think you had a hand up earlier, you put it down. So uh, you can put your question in now and then I'll go and tackle the other question. All right, so hello. Hi. Hello, please can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yes, we don't, we can hear you. So please, uh, yeah. a question, yeah. Some of us can, yeah. Oh, we don't, it's unfortunate. Yeah, so we are currently in school and uh, we are busy bringing to water. Yes, your audio keeps breaking. So if you can put in yes, chat, that would really be great for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, your audio, yeah, you mentioned that some of you are currently in school. Hello. Maybe that presents some challenges. Uh wisdom. So if you can put in the chat, that would be great. Hello. Um All right. Can All, you right. All, right. All right. So yeah, please put in the chat. I had some, but then keeps breaking. So you put in the chat. Okay, so I go through. Oh, this starts of a mentee. So this is a fully, at least the initial engagement. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, once again, it's always great to put your actual name there so that I can always reference. It's good for tracking participation and all of that. But I get uh, so an example. I have Nokia 2.2 here. Uh, how do you think what, take into consideration the distance of a mentee? Now, um, I think COVID has taught us a lot. You really don't need to show up. I have been working from home for close to six months. I've gone to see my clients about 
not more than 10 times in all. So if I can do that, if I can work from home, there is no need to essentially move around just to attend a mentorship program. We want to make it fully uh, desegregated so that we can get access to everyone across the country. This is not an Accra or Kumase uh, program as almost every other thing has been. We want to get to everyone, so it's going to be virtual. We might have maybe one or two very big events within a year based on how the COVID-19 situation progresses. And we'd have to see how to logistically handle that. Maybe we'd have to do across the country to be able to get access. But the main uh, program here is always going to be virtual and we want to keep it that way so that we do not disenfranchise anyone. All right. Okay, so why has gender equality for women in the public sector still an increase worldwide? I really do not get this. I think maybe you mean inequality. If you can really rephrase your question again, that would be great. I'll try and catch it down there. So why has gender equality for women in the public sector still an increase worldwide? So please rephrase it. Let, let's get the question straight. Okay. Yeah. While he does that, can I just jump in on that one? Yes, please. Um, yeah. please. I think by the end of this session, everybody will realize I'm passionate about gender empowerment. But anyway, I, if I get the meaning of his question correct, which he may uh, clarify later, I think the reason we're still talking about gender equality is the fact that we want buy-in from everybody. Because usually when we talk about gender, it's mostly the women who talk about gender. So we want to appeal all to the males, all to, the, to the, all the boys and men to buy into this idea that gender empowerment is important. So when we all start proposing gender empowerment, it will start looking at things through a gender lens. And it also includes uh, equality in the sense that we are no longer talking about men and women, but we are talking about people of different abilities trying to make bring them to a level where they can also participate and contribute in the economy. So uh, uh, that's the initial reaction I have. You may have a, a secondary um, question on that to clarify your question, but I think that was my understanding. Okay. Thank you very much, Irene. Uh, let's hope that the person asked the question again. I think it was from Imano. Emmanuel. Imano Kumi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you know the location of your various mentees? um we don't it's not data that we are collecting um i think we have to pen it down and see whether it's data we should be collecting right and if it's data we should be collecting we will quickly just find a way of essentially uh, collecting that data um, the form is not fixed to um essentially it's not pinned to an account so it might be a little difficult getting those who have filled the form already where it does that data, but we'll see how to connect it. All right, thank you. Yeah. And just to add to that, because the program is also being run virtually, we are reaching people all across Ghana. So at the moment, like Aaron says, it, it, it wasn't the primary information we needed at this point. So if we get to the stage where we start, where the, the economy opens up, all the restrictions are lifted and people can start socializing again, and if it's necessary to meet up with mentors, it's at that point that we probably will come back for information about where we were actually located. Yeah, so we send a quick, a very short survey for you to just indicate where you are, and then that'll help us in the planning if we want to do, um, a, what do you call it, real world um, events. Okay, when you are assigned to a mentor, how do you get access to them? Um, so we do contact you, and you pick up and they can so. Okay, yeah. So when you are matched, you have full access, uh, emails, contacts, they will also reach out to you and you then agree on the format for the, um, what do you call it? How you're going to do it. It's going to be very different from mentor to mentor. We are not forcing anyone to, we have guidelines around ethics and all of that. But then we are not forcing anyone into a format for how to do the one-on-one, -on -one, right? For the general, we are working with them hand in hand. 
for the individual, we just have to essentially make sure that your goals. So we always have to reach out to you to you tell us whether your goals are being met in the program. But when it comes to contacts, yes, you get full access to them. Uh, we are not using a third party platform where they'll be obscured from you. So they will let you know when you can call them on their phone, when you can send them an email, or how quickly they can respond. So all those guidelines will be set for you. So that shouldn't really be a problem. And just to add to that, if you can't get hold of them, you come back to us and we'll be able to see how we, we connect you. So okay. you won't be left alone not knowing what to do. We're always there if you have questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And say that uh, how would the meeting time help us? Um, some of you are in school, some of you have exams and all of that. Yeah. So that will once again come to with a, we are still deliberating the times. We decided to go with a weekend first because of the students. Um, and around the weekends, I think it will be best. We always have to listen to our stakeholders, and you are one of our primary stakeholders. We'll reach out to you quickly so that indicate the times. The we, uh, we did it for the mentors, so we have to do it for you. We let us know your availability throughout the weekend, what time works best for you and all of that, right? And we are very flexible. We are not fixed in our ways. This, it will not help us if we force you to show up when you can't. It's unfortunate we had to do this over a holiday weekend, but we thought it was important before we kick anything off. That's why we're meeting you today. So we'll make sure in that same vein, we listen to you through and through. And then we'll get back to you with a quick survey, just indicate. Uh, you have your weekends, uh, morning, afternoon, evening. This time works best for you. And then we'll see how to essentially align you with the mentors. We know we will miss some people. We are going with the majority that really corresponds between um, us, uh, between you and the mentors. And there will be recordings which you can essentially get access to on uh, through our various social media channels. So we make sure we get you to that. So you're not really uh, bogged down. So coming to the participating in the, uh, what do you call it, in the live session, essentially the benefit you'll be getting about uh, asking the proper questions and all of that. But we don't want to just force people to come when we know that they, it's not possible to get everybody in. Okay. So there's a question, can I be part of your mentorship team after the training? Uh, Matilda. Uh, Matilda, um, I would not jump the gun and assume that I know exactly where you are on your career path, or on your education and all of that. We have criteria for selecting mentors and um, it's essentially just meeting the criteria, more or less. We know some mentors will also even be uh, tuning into the sessions because there are some things that they will not be too knowledgeable about. But we have different tracks. We are opening a track to allow some of our mentees to also be uh, intense on the program itself. And we have certifications for your participation. So once we are very firm on the tracks and how you can come in, and you know the criteria where you can fit, you quickly get back to us. Uh, the guidelines will be there. And then uh, we can always bring you on board, right? So yes, it depends. I think it's the right answer to what you asked. Uh, which days would the meeting be? I think I've touched on it uh, previously. We decided on the weekends mostly because of our students and the availability of our mentors. Almost all of them are working and they are essentially at the very top of their industries. So we cannot pull them most of the time in a weekday. So weekends, and then the time will be communicated based on your feedback on the survey we sent to you. Okay. I think I've also said who uh, qualifies to be a mentor. It should be on the website. I will make sure that it's checked again to see whether we have enough information about how you can be a mentor. Um, and we can have different grades of mentors, essentially. Um, we, we can go to the microcosms of what it means to be a mentor, right? About a final year student helping a first year student out. We can have that, we can have those, right? Which we can also explore. And um, once again, we are not really boxing ourselves in. So we want to take this around the campuses too on how to essentially manage that relationship so that when a first year comes in, they know exactly what to expect and how. So we take people through mentor programs on how to be proper mentors. We set up those programs for you too. So I'll be able to have a decentralized system outside the main 
uh, program. So we'll communicate to you, at least we have um, guidelines on the main program. We will get it to you. I'll make sure it's on the website. If it's not currently, I think it is. If it's not, we'll make sure it's updated and we'll send you through the email. Yes, we are looking at trying to get each Saturday within the year. And um, we will get a calendar to you whilst we, so for each month, you get a full calendar. It's not, it might not be everything you'll be interested in so that you know how to essentially plan your time. I know Ghanaians care a lot about their Saturdays, but then um, we feel this is also very important. So we, it, there might be some small sacrifices which we need to acknowledge because of how packed with these can be. Okay, see if there's no document in your DM. Um, check your email. Um, we followed up with some emails yesterday on some documents. Uh, if you've not received them, get back to us. Um, and then we'll quickly get it to you. Um, I'll check again, um, just to be sure. So check your emails. Um, you should get your documents. We'll follow up with the ones from today. Okay, um, you can hardly hear. Um, it, it, it might be your audio. Kindly check your audio for me because I don't know if there's a general concern. Uh, Irene, can you hear me properly? I, I can. Um... Okay, all right. Okay, I'll try and speak up more and um, please check your audio again for me. All right, thank you very much. Right. Okay, Irene, I think I also just, you know where we are, Wisdom uh, Musa, right? Yes. Okay, so if you can also just check some of the questions for me. Yeah, so what I was just uh, thinking about was we're, we're coming up to like five past um, 11 and I think uh, we, there, there are a lot of questions coming through, which is really good. So we'll capture those and we can come back with the answers by email. We can answer all the remaining questions by email and send to you. And I guess using the I am resilient at resilientghana.com um, would be a good email to use. Or Aaron, would you suggest another one? Because that's the one I'm proposing for queries or other questions yeah so yes I've, that that should work uh that should work for queries uh, yeah okay so i think um just just mindful of time because i was saying this would we were saying this would be a short shortish meeting we don't want to we don't want to keep you on for more than you you have time for uh, we can come back, except everybody is happy to stay on another uh, five, 10 minutes to go more through more of the questions. Um, if not, we are happy to, to round up now. So what's the feeling? Um, I, I think they are more than willing to looking at how nobody has dropped up yet. So we can quickly maybe touch on a few. And um, I okay. think there's a question about uh, the rural youth. And um, as I mentioned, we, in the beginning, we can only do so much. We can only move so many mentors around. Um, there are some very decentralized, I, I think uh, variant is the university one that I mentioned. They are very decentralized ways in which we can reach the youth um, outside the main cities. We are keeping a very keen eye, eye on that. And that, I think that's one of the reasons why we decided to um, use uh, uh, what you call a virtual platform. We, we can find ways of packaging. Um, so videos might be too big on YouTube and all of that. You can find ways of packaging the presentation so that we still get our presentations be made available. But the strategy, I think the main reason why we are going with this in the first stage is so that we can get participation from the rural uh, youth. And there are very low bandwidth options I know on YouTube, uh, which we can, and if we can work with the networks, I think it's something we can also consider, work with the networks to have a zero rating for a platform where you can get the videos free. We will also explore that, but that that will be a medium to long-term uh, suggestion, right? Because we need to have it as a different, uh, it cannot be, there's always a domain issue when you're trying to zero rate 
Um, so say we can say with our website and then we can host the videos there directly. That's an option we just put on the back, right? On how to get it to everyone. So yeah, um, thank you for that. It's just inform our strategy on how to reach everyone. Yeah, right. good question. Okay, I think the link has been, okay, someone posted a link. Um, yeah, so the link posted the gives access. Um, I think the team sent yesterday. Um, yeah, would it be a medium for suggestions in Ghana by mentees? Yes, we give the email. So you can always send the email through. Uh, see, send an email anytime, reach out to us. Um, we we'll see whether we can have a small suggestion box on the website. That should be very easy to implement so that you can always go there to put your feedback in. Um, yeah, I, so sure, no problem, success. We can always start a debate about that. Um, we are just being driven by the data. Um, once again, Helping one group does not disenfranchise the other. I will not go too deep into women empowerment and why we are focusing on women empowerment. But all what I have to say is that, once again, um, most of the respondents to our program were male. And uh, we've not essentially targeted just a female demographic. At no point have we broadcast a message to just a female demographic, but we understand there are very peculiar challenges faced by females too. And um, that's helping one group once again, does not imply, it's not a zero sum game, does not imply disenfranchising the other. So we are making sure that we are helping as much as we can to the best that we can. When we cannot save the world, we can only help make it better through the small, uh, the increments that we are trying to reach here. So thank you for that. Um, I hope I answered your question. What's up? I think I, tag, I touched on that. We will set up a group. Um, they have been suggesting between Telegram, WhatsApp, um, uh, what do you call it, Slack. And uh, there's also a Teams option. So we'll look at, we'll look at the pros and cons and then decide on one and then share it through the broadcast. Yes, so once again, we will respond to the rest through emails. Um, and then let me quickly, I think I'm going a, a, bit, a bit too much. Um, no, it, it, stable network will really not affect. It's unfortunate that we still have that issue uh, about network stability. Uh, we have to make sure it doesn't really go against you. Um, we'll see how. I think one thing, just the top of my head, one thing we can look at is, uh, allow you to still send in your questions after the videos are made available after the sessions so that we still know that we have good participation from you. We, we don't want to do that. We, we don't, it, it won't be a good idea, right? Certification and all, uh, there, there's always a, a conundrum about um, providing certifications. We know us, we've all been students before. We know how sometimes we end up chasing the A instead of focusing on the lesson being communicated. Uh, there's, all, there's a behavioral uh, economic, um, under, uh, what do you call it, factor to consider on what kind of um, acknowledgement to give participation, but not make it entirely about uh, acknowledgement. We don't want to be just another university. We want you to learn as much as you can. And the metrics we are targeting essentially around your ability to get a job, how quickly you get a job whilst you join the program, the mentorship, uh, the internship placement. So we have some targets that we are looking at. And our main focus is to make sure that you get someone. Uh, that's, it's very important that we do not mistake in this as just a PR. This is not a PR campaign at all. We really are genuinely trying to help as many as we can. Um, we know that we've all felt that. So, yeah. 
we will look at that. At least identity to let people know they are part of the program. It helps us as much as it helps anyone. So we will get that. We will, uh, let me at least help promise you that you will get something to let people know that you are part of our program. And then you become our ambassadors too. Because this, we don't want it to be exclusive. We want to help as many as possible. Are we going to uptake through? Are you going to say, no, I really don't. I don't really get it. So if you can rephrase your question, Irene, I don't know if you get this. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm not sure, but I suspect, are we going, I, I suspect he's, he's just asking if they'll only be getting updates via email. So it's- oh, Okay, it's update. okay, I, okay yeah, I think update. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are using a multi-channel approach. Always, always check our website. If there's any events, anything, it's go to our website. The email is just to make sure that we are on top. I think this one, it really, we didn't set it up. This will be on the website. Yeah. But it's also very important to get into the habit of taking your email serious. It will not be through just email, but my advice to you is that always take your email serious. That's where anybody who really wants to do anything for you will go through. Um, once the WhatsApp group is all set up, we'll make sure that communication also goes through there. So we, use a, we are using a multi-channel approach and uh, we'll make sure that the message gets to you as much as you can. All right, I think I'll stop here and then we'll take the other questions. Um, and then respond to the other questions, if you may. So we'll just bundle it and then uh, this, this should be yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be able, because a, a lot of the other questions I was just scanning through um, is very similar to what has been asked previously. So it's about documentation and things. Um, so yeah, if there are any other questions, we can respond to that. I think just to add to what Aaron said, um, like Khadija highlighted earlier, some information will be going through social media. So if you, you also put the tools I on, on these channels and um, that would happen. And if eventually we do set up a WhatsApp uh, group, then that would be another way of getting uh, quick communications out, but that's not a set up yet. So there's quite a lot of question about uh, documentation. And I think we've posted the email address. I am resilient at indianghana.com. If you just let us know, we'll send you the missing documentation. I think that's about it. And um, William, forgive us for taking your time. Eh? Uh, we tried ending earlier, but there were a lot of questions coming in. Uh, we'll make sure we do not always uh, go beyond the stipulated time again. Yeah. Um, forgive us. This is a first engagement, so we try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, mm. Yeah, thank you. And, and to be fair to William, who raised the suggestion, um, I, I was proposing to take the rest of the questions offline, and there was just a suggestion that maybe we just We'll just carry on and answer as many questions as possible. But yes, we will be strict on time, both in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, both in terms of people joining and also when we do actually finish. So if it's an, a one hour slot, we'll try to respect that time. On that note, I'll just like to highlight to everyone that the first session starts on uh, 10th of April, it's a Saturday. And most of the courses are being run on a Saturday, like we've mentioned previously. Um, we are, aware of the fact that some of the mentees who will be attending um, may not be able to make morning sessions and it's possible to organize with the mentors to have sessions in the afternoon. So what we're thinking of is starting sessions from 10 o'clock in the morning, like you join today and in the afternoon, maybe start like at one o'clock, but nearer before the actual session we will confirm the times when we've spoken with both you and the mentors to make sure the time is convenient for both. So on that note, from my part, thanks once again for joining and for your attentive listening. And um, I'm sure it will be a very uh, a productive program for all of us and an enjoyable one as well. We've got some fantastic mentors lined up. And um, yeah, so all the best. Aaron, I'll hand it over to you to finish. Thank you very much, everyone. Um... Thank you. Please reach out, okay? Uh, if you have questions, anything, please reach out to us. And uh, let's have a great Easter. Uh, happy Easter to everyone. Um, let's catch up again on the 10th. And uh, please tell your friends about it. Uh, let, it let them sign up. Um, 
So once again, if I leave anything, I look forward to as many of you ending up as mentors in the next uh, few years to come. Then we know we are being successful. Then we know we are doing something right. So please help us help you. And um, yeah, let's win together. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.